It's time for EdTech Mondays, brought to you by Mastercard Foundation and CC Hub. Welcome to the EdTech Mondays Nigeria show, where we explore the dynamic world of educational technology. I am your host, Chinye Luapa, and it's good to be here again. Last week, we kicked off the conversation on the topic EdTech for Diverse Learning Needs and Styles with our guest and early childhood director who shared valuable insights on the topic and how technology can be leveraged um, to support these very needs. She also explained to us the types of learners that we have, kinesthetic learners, audio learners, visual learners. And we understood that your kids were not stubborn. They just had various ways they would prefer to learn and how we could leverage technology to unlock learning for these types of learners. In case you miss this conversation, you can always catch up at any time on Spotify at EdTech Mondays Nigeria. All the episodes of the show are on there. Do well to listen and share your feedback. This week, we'll be continuing this interesting conversation and we'll be delving deeper into addressing specific learning challenges. Today, focusing on dyslexia. And our guest is a mental health professional and the founder of One Word Africa Foundation, a dyslexia-focused initiative. Inspired by her own personal experience, she began advocating for dyslexia in 2015 and has since then conducted extensive research on dyslexia management, tailoring strategies to fit the Nigerian context. With over seven years of experience, she has trained parents and teachers on dyslexia management and provides consultations on inclusive management and implementation. Her expertise is globally recognized, supported by extensive training in psychological first aid, cognitive behavioral therapy, trauma-informed approaches, business development, and leadership. She's passionate about expanding therapeutic interventions in Nigeria and has contributed to two best-selling books and received recognition from the United Nations Academic Impact. She'll be joining us virtually and is very excited to be here. Welcome, Ola Doi Ido. It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me me i'm excited to be here thank you so we'll jump right in Ola Doni, can you tell us about your journey with dyslexia um, and how it inspired you to come up with the one word africa foundation what's dyslexia how did you figure out you were dyslexic and you know what has the experience been okay so um my experience with dyslexia was um typically going into the traditional Nigerian education system like every other child. I think at the age of two or three, I have to ask my parents to confirm what age I said at school. But I remember, you know, going into school and I'd always been described as a very inquisitive and, you know, very forward child. But that soon became our a challenge because I went into school and I couldn't be at par with my classmate. There was an evident difference in you know, my academic records and, you know, my ability to learn. And that just continued to be what my school experiences were shaped by. Um, so I went through school, you know, with that ident identity of a struggling learner who couldn't learn despite being taught in the classroom. And what this looked like was emulations from my teachers, um, complaints from my parents and isolation from my classmates. And, you know, and that was what, again, up until um, post-secondary school, I went on to do A-levels. And I you know I, I just said, when I got to A-levels, I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I quit. Um, you know, everything that has to do with school, maybe it's just not for me because I had no idea what was going on. Um, so 2015, you know, after I decided to like quit school, I now started when wondering what was going to become next of me. Like, what, what does this future owe? You know, what's my reality? You know, not going to school, what then? And so research, I started research into trying to learn a skill and also researching to actually know what was wrong with me. I came across the word dyslexia. And when I came across the word dyslexia, it was like, you moment, I would ask then like, bulb moment. I'm like, okay, 
okay, you know. And um, I delved into research into that, and that became, you know, the beginning of um, me advocating for dyslexia, getting my diagnosis, and, you know, amongst other things. Great. So um, you've told us how you've stumbled, you know, on that diagnosis for yourself. I'm, I'm sure it was very challenging for you at that point, um, being told you were not good enough, being mocked. And I'm sure I could, I could just imagine the frustration from your parents as well, like, what is this child's problem? We do not have this in this family. Everybody in this family, you know, is a professor, is a scholar. So why are you different? So um, for our listeners and our viewers, what is dyslexia? What does that condition mean? What are the limitations? So I'm going to put it very simply so that, you know, anyone can understand it. So dyslexia is a learning difficulty it's a specific learning difficulty specific because it affects just learning so the person a brain of a dyslexic person is fully formed um if you do an iq test they have average or above average iq so it has nothing to do with the brain or intelligence quotient it's only specific to learning so children or people with dyslexia will typically struggle to learn in a traditional classroom environment and that's because of the brain wiring. So people who are dyslexic attempt to be right brain dominant, which are not the area that are stimulated in a traditional learning environment. Wow. Um, so what you will see or how to tell when a child has dyslexia, you know, they will struggle with auditory processing, verbal and word recognition, um, you know, Sometimes also comprehension, because if you cannot um, process or recognize the words, you can't read it. And if you can't read it, then you can't comprehend it, you know. Um, so those are like the typical. Um, so that child who is struggling to learn despite the, you know, instruction you've given them, you know, you those are some of the telling signs to to see there, there are a lot of other characteristics because the selection is on a spectrum of mild, moderate to severe. But the first selling signs is struggle to learn despite adequate in instructions and, you know, proper intelligence. Great. So this is, I, I think the, the key word for us here is the beats where the learners are struggling to learn in a traditional setting. So there are various ways you could engage them that the regular way of teaching and learning cannot, you know, fix, cannot meet. It won't work. So, and, and, and now taking it, you know, um, thinking further, at the point where you figured out <laughs> this thing is not working in 2015, you were already, you know, mature, you know, mental wise and grown also. So how then did you begin to learn? And this is in relation to technology. What was the role technology played in then helping you unlock learning? Um, and how were you able to figure out what type of learning you would need. So what role did technology um, play? I'm mean, asking this because over time, um, people believe that technology is just, will just disable a child, right? It will just make you very slow. It will make the child, so imagine a child who is struggling to learn and you're giving the child a tab, giving the child a computer. Parents just feel you're making the whole matter worse. So what role did technology play in helping you? Were there any specific things you were doing online or that leverage technology to help you then begin to unlock learning, literacy, you know, numeracy, language and sound recognition and things like that? Thank you for that question. And um, I like to, you know, make the joke that if I was born in the time when technology did not exist, I would, you know, just kill me. Kill me dead, you know, because I'm very dependent on assistive tech. Um, assistive tech is literally all that I do. But, you know, going back to answer your question in, you know, following the process of your thought, um, up until the point when I discovered the word dyslexia, prior to that, I could identify that I had a strength in learning when it comes to visuals. You know, if I if I could experience what you're teaching me, I would understand it. Is when your the teaching becomes abstract and logical, then I start to have difficulties because I need to be able to form a mental picture of what you're teaching for me to actually comprehend it. So, um, for so fast forward to then discovering the word dyslexia, journey to getting official diagnosis, amongst other things. I knew that I had a strength of visual and kinesthetic learning. So when I was started researching into dyslexia, um, one of the things um, resources I even enjoyed watching were videos, you know, on YouTube. 
you know, um, listen to audios as opposed to reading them because reading them could be a lot more stressful for me because I'm trying to recognize the word. I'm trying to follow the sequence of thought. But if I'm listening, it takes a little less pressure for me and, you know, I can understand it. So, um, you know, so that's technology is one tool that I would say has helped a lot even till now because there's so many tools like test the speech, you know, um, sometimes, I'm in a meeting and I'm trying to be there at the meeting, but since I'm supposed to take notes at the meeting, I record you. And so I am there, visibly there. And later on, I can now convert that audio into text just so that there are documentation for that. You know, so technology has done a world of good, you know, um, tech solutions have done a world of good for diverse learners because um, one of the things I also tell teachers and even parents that when you're teaching a child comprehension, for instance, what's the goal of that or that topic is comprehension for the child to comprehend what the child you used to comprehend is not the goal it's the comprehension that is the goal yeah. so if you need to introduce you know an audio note for a child during a comprehension class the goal at the end of the day is what comprehension so that's what i tell teachers be open-minded to introducing different ways as long as for every class is an objective of what that class or topic is supposed to do and your work is done if you meet that objective how you met that objective you know, open your minds to different ways you can do that. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ola Doi. Um, so now, you know, speaking now to the availability of these learning resources, how easy or difficult was it to find, you know, learning resources that fit the Nigerian context? Because I want to believe that you work with a lot of Nigerian learners. And I'm asking this because um, there are I apply a, a plethora of solutions, you know, videos and the rest. Um, and I know that when a lot of these guys who are, you know, up not global not are designing, they are thinking about, you know, inclusivity, that they are learners who have this special learning needs. And you see them, you know, designing the content flow so that kinesthetic learners like you are brought in, maybe through, you know, their gestures and the colors and popping things like that. So do you, would you say that we have those type of contextual, you know, solutions, products that would fit the context for the Nigerian learners of today who might be grappling with the um, this condition, dyslexia? Um, so I would say that are there are resources there. Do they fit cultural context? Not quite. So what, so what you will find is you are now having to use many different resources mm. to achieve what you need it would be perfect if we can you know log on to one platform or two platform and you can get the work done but the reality is you have to combine a lot of resources which you know some of them as well the free version has limited features and then the paid version now has you know some of the features that you need now imagine using a paid version of like 10 12 different resources. Um, think of a child who is from a low cost family. That's difficult to, you know, that's difficult to navigate, right? So unfortunately, we still, there's still work to be done in providing resources that are affordable and that are designed with diverse learners in mind. So we have, um, so some of those resources that you'll find would have either this, you know, but not have this, either that do not have that. Um, so, so Dave, that's still a that's still something we're struggling with. Thank you so much for your time, Ola Doing. It was refreshing um, speaking and listening to you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And to you, our listeners, what do you think about this week's topic? How do you think we can continue to support learners with special learning needs while leveraging technology? Send us an SMS or a WhatsApp message on 0703. 1650809 would love to hear from you. You could also join our EdTech Mondays community on Telegram and on WhatsApp to share your feedback with us. And do not forget also, in case you know anyone who might have missed this live show, please tell them to listen via Spotify or to check us up on YouTube. On Spotify, we are EdTech Mondays Nigeria. And on YouTube, we are CC Hub Africa. It was a wonderful time on this week's episode of the EdTech Mondays show. And until I come your way same time next week, I remain your host, Chinyelo Apa. It's bye for now.
EdTech Monday is proudly brought to you by MasterCard Foundation and CC Hub.